Hey everyone, Shabby Gamer here and welcome back to our second episode of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Now of course you didn't see the last episode, I'll go back and check it out, but didn't see it basically we are doing a tournament here to crown our first champion for our 205 Live Universe mode. And it will be the 205 Live Champion, so we're introducing that as the main championship of the brand and then keeping the Cruiserweight as the mid-card belt. Right, in this episode, we're going to have three matches for you, of course. Adam Cole versus TJP, uh, Kira Dezawa versus Johnny Gargano, and then, of course, the final of Pool 1. So without further ado, let's get straight to the first match. And here we go then, Adam Cole, who defeated Noam Dar in the first round. If you didn't see, it was a pretty interesting one because Noam Dar was actually assaulted by a masked man during the match, hit with a shining wizard which allowed Adam Cole to pick up the victory. So who was that masked man? We have no idea up to yet. And here we go then, Adam Cole's opponent, TJP, defeated Tyler Bate in the first round, which is a big, big result for him. Can he keep this great form going? Of course, he was the original winner of WWE's first Cruiserweight Classic. Can he win SWE's first Cruiserweight? Can he win SWE's first Cruiserweight Classic as well? Right then, here we go. Adam Cole versus TJP. The bell goes. We are underway. Adam Cole straight away with that massive drop kick. So yeah, the uh, the whole situation, the previous match for Adam Cole. Then we don't quite know who it was that attacked Noam Dar. Um, we just know it was some guy in a mask. Um, it's a weird one. It, 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 there's several ways. There's two different ways we can look at it. Either somebody wanted to help Adam Cole win. Or somebody wanting to make sure that Noam Dar lost. So it really does leave it open. Of course, the people that were hoping to help Adam Cole win, you would imagine would be Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, and Roderick Strong. However, size-wise, the guy was pretty big compared to them. So I doubt it would have been any of them. But you never know. You never know. People that would want Noam Dar to lose? Again, I don't quite know, to be honest. No, I'm dad doesn't seem to have any natural enemies at this point in time, but... Yeah, the masked man was very podgy for uh, for 205 Live, but I'm sure... Yeah, we'd, have to, we'd have to have a look and see how things pan out. I, I like the idea, though. It sort of worked out in our favour, didn't it, really? It gives us our first angle to build 205 Live off, the whole... Who attacked Noam Da? Was it Rikishi? I did it for The Rock. A nice little Attitude Era reference there for you people. Kudos for getting it. I did it for The Rock. So TJP in control of the early parts of the match. He was very much dominant in the match against Tyler Bate. That was a, a pretty weird match that was. TJP dominated the first few minutes. Tyler Bate got virtually no offense at all. Then all of a sudden Tyler Bate turned the match around. And I didn't think TJP was going to get back into it. I thought TJP was done and dusted. And then all of a sudden, TJ, PJT, uh, that TJP turned it around again and managed to pull off the victory. It was such a... It wasn't like end-to-end. -end. It was more sort of a half each or a third each of the match. It was really weird the way it worked. They took it in real turns. Adam Cole dominated Noam Dar and I thought he had a, a quick victory in Noam Dar. But um, fortunately for him, Noam Dar will show some incredible resilience. And it wasn't until the, the masked man attacked... Noam Dar, that Adam Cole was able to, to get the final breakthrough. Adam Cole did no manoeuvre after Noam Dar was attacked, so that attack alone was enough to finish Noam Dar off. So Adam Cole in control of the match now. He would love to be the first 205 Live Champion. Of course, he wasn't successful in becoming the first NXT Champion in our previous Universe Mode. Another lock in there of the STF. Adam Cole able to break free though. Nice, just close lines TJP into the corner. Cole with a boot in the gut now taking TJP up on his shoulders. Nice, Yuri Garoshi, the Death Valley driver into the neck breaker, then into a super kick, followed into a straight jacket. German one, two. It's only a two count. Adam Cole would love to get to the final episode here. Still looking for your guys' answers of what you want to see in the finals. Whether you want to see a fatal four-way or two semis at a final. 
It's up to you what you want to see. Adam Cole, super kick to the gut into the Shining Wizard. And Adam Cole is going into tonight's final to face off against the winner of Johnny Gargano and Akira Tozawa. Great win there by Adam Cole. It was a pretty much back and forth match again. Both guys really showing some great offense. But eventually Adam Cole was able to come out on top and I was going to say showed his experience, but I think TJP is a lot more experienced than Adam Cole, but Cole just picked his opportunities and took them well. I mean, TJP looked like he was going more for a submission-based match, but that was a super kick into the straight jacket German, which is called the Florida Keys, I believe. I might be wrong. And there was the Shining Wizard by Adam Cole, the knee strike to the head, and that was enough to finish TJP off. So TJP did well to get through the first round. And I'm sure we'll see some good stuff from him as well. TJP could potentially be involved in how we crown our first Cruiserweight Champion, couldn't he, as well? That'd be good to see. One down, one to go. And straight into the next match, then here is Akira Tozawa, who defeated... Oh, here we go. It's my memory kicking in now. It was a few days ago, wasn't it? Akira Tozawa defeated... Who would we, who would we feed? I just looked at the list a second ago. I, it will come to me. It will come to me. I promise it will come to me. And he is going to be taking on Johnny Gargano. Who defeated Gran Metalik in the first round. And in fairness, Gran Metalik dominated the majority of the match. It was just when Johnny Gargano was able to lock in that Gargano escape middle of the ring that got him the victory. So here we go, then Akira Tozawa versus Johnny Gargano. Who did Akira Tozawa face? It's really bugging me now. Who was it? It was a mid-drift person, I think. It wasn't like one of the main stars. But it was someone who was a dark horse in this competition, I think. I don't remember. I'm pretty perplexed. I don't know. It don't matter. It does not matter. We'll be able to see after this match anyway who it was. It's going to bug me though, whatever way, isn't it? Dragano getting a stronger start in this one. Of course, he struggled against Grand Metalik and had to really just hold on for as much as he possibly could. He took Grand Metalik's finisher twice, which is pretty crazy. Other tag teams, I've been thinking about the tag team division here. Um, wow. What? He's locked in. Oh my god, Johnny Gargano taking no prisoners here. Okay. Apart from my PlayStation. So there we go. I managed to get back up and running. Johnny Gargano did win. There we go. What, what a disaster that was. Eh? Johnny Gargano just squashed Akira Tozawa though. With that Gargano escape locked in very, very early in the match. And that's pretty impressive. So Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. The final we all wanted to see is coming up now. And here we go then. Final time of pool one. The winner of this one will go into either the semis and then the final or the fatal four-way. Depending on what you guys have decided you want to see. I think I'm leaning towards fatal four-way to be honest with you. It's a shame we can't do elimination anymore because that would have been better, I think, in my opinion, but hey-ho. Adam Cole, of course, along his journey to this match. Oh, God, my memory's got even worse now. He defeated Noam Dar in the first round. And he defeated TJP in the second round to make it here to face off against Johnny Gargano. And here is that man, Johnny Gargano, then. He defeated both... Gran Metalik and then squashed Akira Dozawa, locking in that Gargano escape twice very, very quickly and able to get tap out very, very well as well. And for those of you who are, like me, struggling to remember what we were talking about in the previous match, Akira Dozawa knocked out Buddy Murphy in that first round. I told you it would come to me eventually. And when I say come to me, I mean I looked in between the matches to see who got knocked out. But either way, we got there in the end. Right, Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. The winner of this one will go into uh, the next phase of this tournament. We'll be crowned the winner of Pool 1. 
Of course, we still have three more pools left for you. Um, so it's going to be a, a pretty cool little tournament. It'd be nice to see. Uh, pool 2 is looking pretty strong as well. Um, I can tell you that Finn Balor is in Pool 2. If that don't bring you back for the next episode, don't know what will. Also, Kyler Riley in Pool 2 as well. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be a pretty damn good one, that one. There's probably two, like, big, big names in each one. Like, two people that I would put forward as favourites to win the tournament in each round. And then there's a few dark horses in each one as well. We're not going to see all of the wrestlers. They'll be part of the roster. Oh, I was talking about tag teams earlier, wasn't I? There's another tag team that I've managed to secure that I'm very happy about. Um, which will be a great addition to our 205 Live roster. That's all, the, that's all the knowledge I'm giving you. That's a, I realise now that's a real pointless thing for me to tell you if I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. It's the Bollywood Boys. We've got the Bollywood Boys. You saw them in the little video where I announced this universe mode. I'm actually getting calls of the Bollywood Boys. It's pretty good, really, because the faces are on the game already. So it's just a case of creating the attires, and someone has done that, which is pretty good. I'm, I'm enjoying the fact of that. Um, they might end up being jobbers by the looks of it. Their stats are not very high, but still. It's just nice to have an extra tag. I think we have a pretty good tag division, actually. The Bollywood Boys, Red Dragon, potentially Akira Tazara and Apollo Crews, depending on your guys' reaction to that. Uh, the Usos are a good shout, but I need to double-check their weight, but I'm pretty sure they could be involved. Um, Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston as a tag team, I think, could be involved. And that's five tag teams already. I'm sure there's probably more that I, I'm not remembering as well. Um, Tommaso Champ is part of this tournament as well. Here's another question for you. Another episode question, right? Where do we stand on Sami Zayn? Does he, ma does he meet the criteria for this roster? I feel like he might do, you know. Hmm. He's not somebody I've got planned in as yet, but... You know what? Israel, that's your question of the day. Sami Zayn. Is he daft or is he dangerous? Sami Zayn. Do you think he uh, he meets the criteria for this roster? So there's the whole Sami Zayn and Apollo Crews situation in this episode then. So yeah, let me know in the comment section down below whether you want to see those two. I think Sami Zayn should be fine. He's quite a slight fellow. I'm sure he does... Probably meet the criteria to be part of this roster. It's Apollo Crews that meets the style but not the limits. It's very much like the X Division. Where the X Division was about the style. Not, it's about no limits, not weight limits. That was it, wasn't it? Which is why the likes of Samoa Joe and that were involved. So Gargano in control of the match at this point in time. Like I said, he's already won the NXT Championship this year for uh, the SWE brands. And... If he walked away with a 205 Live Championship as well, it would have been an incredible year for him. I feel like Gargano's going to get a lot more use this year. I mean, we didn't use him too much last year, to be honest with you. I mean, I think we were still... We've been finding our feet for many years with these universe modes. And I feel like we've been developing more and more and more to a point where I think we've managed to find an optimum for now. I mean, don't get me wrong, things will still develop and change, I think, but... Shorter videos, shorter universe modes, more varied universe modes. Um, I think is definitely the key to, to keeping engagement, I think. I mean, when I'm uploading an hour and a half long video every... Oh my god, he's going to do it again. Dead centre of the ring. Johnny Gargano locks in the Gargano escape for the third time in this tournament. Is he going to get a third tap? He does. Dead centre of the ring. Adam Cole is eliminated. And Johnny Gargano wins pull one. Wow. And my voice broke up through that, I think. What a win by Johnny Gargano. Wow, I'm... I'm I don't say I'm surprised, but... I really just had my money on Adam Cole to win this first brand, you know, this first uh, pull. But there we go, Johnny Gargano showing just how much of a force he is on this year's game. I mean, he's not overly rated. I think he's rated lower than Adam Cole, to be honest with you. But Adam Cole... Unable to... It's, it's that submission, I think, is just so powerful. I think that's what it is, because... Like, I've seen a lot so far where people are hitting their signature and their finishing manoeuvre, and people are kicking out. 
However, if you lock in a submission hold, you seem to get the victory pretty quickly and pretty easily, especially if your submission skills are pretty high. But there we go. Johnny Gargano with the victory. He wins pull one. And he's going to move forward to the next stage of this competition. There are three more pulls coming up for you over the next few weeks. Keep an eye out for those. And the winners of all those, like I said, will go into the final part of the competition, which on your decision will either be two semi-finals and a final or one fatal four-way. Of course, the one fatal four-way will be backed up by other matches as well, just to uh, open up the episode a bit more, make it more interesting. So that is your decisions to make. So that's three questions I've given you, right? Answer them below. This is, this is your job now. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing the work over to you because I can't be bothered anymore. Question number one. Apollo Crews. Yay or nay? I'm pretty sure he's over the weight limit. But he does meet the criteria for the style. And it will give us an extra tag team alongside Akira Tozawa. Question two. Sami Zayn. I think very much meets the criteria of style. And I'm pretty sure we'll meet the criteria of weight as well. Yay or nay? Question number three. I asked this on the episode one as well. The finals for this tournament, there's going to be four people winning, of course, the four different pools. Do you want to see one fatal four-way backed up by a couple of singles matches? Or would you like to see two singles semis and then one singles final in the same episode? That is your questions. I await your answers down below. So if you have enjoyed this one, please do hit a like and, of course, subscribe if you want to see some more. I've been Shabby Game. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for more NXT. And I'll see you on Tuesday for the beginning of... Pool number two in this Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Bye. Bye, 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 bye,